Well, welcome to Martini Live. So let's see what the frog brings up from the pond. I was just out sitting at my pond, and darn if I didn't hear a frog. They just appear, I don't know. I never put them in there, and they appeared, and now the spring, and, and uh, one of them's croaking, and yet uh, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> Maybe it does rain frogs. I don't know, but I was talking about the writing about today. A lot of times on Facebook, I'll get an idea going, and I'll write about it and um, put it on my blog. Usually, I, you know, I'll be stumbling, you know, roaming around on Facebook and somebody will come up with a topic and uh, I'll write to it and I, I like what I wrote so I put it on my blog and uh, today I was writing about forgiveness and it was a long thread. Everybody was coming in about forgiveness and what it means to them and what the problem with it and all that and I realized that with Christians, with Christianity in the West, particularly Christianity, forgiveness is a big deal. You're supposed to forgive your enemies. This is a commandment of Christ. Forgiveness. Uh, it's a really big deal, but who can do it? <laughs> and I got to think, but why can't we, why is it so difficult? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, basically, an example, if somebody hurts you, usually it's because a, a trust is broken. And the hurt is worse by a friend or a partner, you know. Trust is broken. Uh, and you get, uh, it's like a, yum, damn, a hit right in the gut, you know, bam. Uh, so now you got this wound. I mean, it's a wound. All right, so you got this wound, and uh, I can see the sun just came out and changed the light. <laughs> so, so you got this wound, and there's a cause to it. Somebody shot the arrow. Okay, so the wound is like an arrow wound, and somebody shot the arrow. And we've got to blame somebody for that wound. So we're going to blame somebody shot me with somebody shot me, uh, or I shot myself. Blame myself or blame myself. But the problem is, the, the commandment is, forgive, your, forgive the person who shot you with, shot you with the wound. So, what's going on? So now we've got uh, a feeling, that's the wound, a painful feeling, and we've got a story of who did it. Now, who did it is in the past. It's already done. It's, if I have amnesia, or I had my mind wiped clean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have anybody to forgive, and I probably wouldn't have the pain, because there was nobody to blame. Nobody, the, the, the memory, if the memory goes, um, the wound goes, because the wound is attached to the memory. You see, so the, but the memory's in the past, and it's part of the story of me. He wounded, I'm the victim, he wounded, my friend wounded me, and it hurts. And, uh, now I got a choice, you see. Now, now I got, you know, here's the problem with the, the two commandments here that are contradictory yet mutually dependent. Okay, one commandment is, thou shalt forgive. Okay, and I want to be a good person, a good Christian. However, I feel the pain. You know, the, and the pain creates the anger. Uh, you know, in other words, I feel the pain of the wound, and because I can't get rid of it, I get angry. Or moody, or whatever the effect of it is. But, but the basic thing is, it, it's a wound that I can't get rid of. So I can try to forgive, oh yeah, so I can either try to forgive, and then kind of like repress the pain, Mm, push it down, boom, boom, boom. But that doesn't work because it comes up again. I see them and it comes back up. Or something triggers it. Uh, something just reminds me, oh, damn, there it is again. You see? So, you know, pushing, repressing it doesn't help. So the other one is to be a hypocrite. Okay, you smile. I forgive him. Yeah, I forgive him. 
but I really don't. I still, I really don't do it because I can't change the feeling. The, the feeling is honest. The feeling is my nature. So I've got a conflict between commandment and my nature. I should forgive, but I don't feel forgiveness. Now that's a wound right there. I just wounded myself. That's splitting me. Splitting me between body and mind. My mind says, my thinking, oh, I should forgive, I should be good, and all that. I'm trying, all that, yada, yada, but I don't feel it. So my nature is feeling, my thinking is what I should be. You see, so I should forgive, but I don't feel it. So I know I'm not, I'm not so I'm really caught in a vice. So how do you get out of that, you see? This, this is like the double wound of forgiveness. Uh, the first wound is somebody when somebody uh, hurts you, broke a trust. The second wound is when you're caught in the vice between I should forgive and I can't forgive. You see, that's the second wound. So how do we get rid of this? This is really, no, I, I, <laughs> I apply Zen. But for me, Zen is like Robitussin. <laughs> remember, I, I remember a Chris Rock comedy. And he was talking about Robitussin. And growing up in, the, in this uh, family, and they just put some Tussin on it, put some Robitussin, put some Tussin on that. And, and Robitussin was what you did for everything. <laughs> so to me, Zen is what you do for everything. But, who, but you know, when I talk about Zen, I talk about uh, uh, just basic uh, insight, uh, discovery. Insight. I don't talk about going to a Zen monastery and doing all that, no. I just talk about how do you create the conditions for insight. And insight heals. See, insight heals. <coughs> Excuse me. So how do you create the conditions for healing? Well, here's what you do. Now, uh, don't just believe this. You really have to try it out. So, so you've been wounded. All right. And the wound is attached to a memory. So you may be going along, and if you remember the person, the wound comes up. So they're connected. You remember the event, and the wound comes up. But you can't get rid of the cause because it's in the past, and you can't go back in the past and redo the past. So you can't, get, you can't remove the cause, but the cause causes the feeling. So now I got this feeling again. I got this wound that won't heal. So you, you, you set up a practice. So you sit down and say, okay, I'm going to invite the wound. All right? So I sit there and, I'm, and I remember the event. I remember the event and the wound and the pain comes up. Aha, there it is. Now, I just allow the pain to be there. It's just a feeling. It's just a feeling, remember. It's not the end of the world. It's just a feeling. I allow this emotion, this, this, uh, this anger, or whatever the feeling is, I allow it to be there, and I disconnect from the story. I let the story go. And if I start, so I'm meditating on the pain, like it, like it was a picture, or like it was a goldfish, or like whatever it is, it's something. So you meditate on it, you just let it alone but you don't leave it. That's meditation. You keep your attention on it. You don't leave it, but you don't do anything to it. You don't judge it. You don't fix it. You don't tweak it. You don't avoid it. Nothing. You just sit with it. So there it is. And if the mind starts going off into the cause again, oh, that son of a bitch, I'd like to smack the, you know, whatever. Oh, cut that. Back to the pain. It's like meditating on the breath. So you meditate on the breath, and then thinking comes in, yada, yada, yada. I'm off in Florida, so, oh, breath, come back to breath. So you're meditating on the pain. So you bring the feeling up. It's just a feeling. You bring it up. It's, it's not, there's nothing in the room, so the feeling is not in the room. It's just something you're, it's like a hairball. You go, <coughs> you bring it up. You say, hairball is like you can't swallow it, you can't cough it up. So you just let it come up there and sit there. But the point is that you, in the meditation on it, you don't let your mind go off into the cause and the story and the victim and what, 
why did that person do it? And you could go on forever trying to figure out why you got this wound by going back and ruminating on the cause. So we don't meditate on the cause. We meditate on the feeling because the feeling is present. The cause is past tense, you see. So you're disconnecting what, what is from what was. Because what was doesn't do you any good. Can't go back. So you meditate on what is, and you discover that when you stop resisting the pain, the pain begins to dissolve. So what held the pain? It's like what held this hot coal? What held this burning pain was my trying to get rid of it. And I was trying to get rid of it by trying to get rid of the cause. And the cause was in the past, so I can't get rid of it. So I'm stuck. And I'm going around. This is yada, yada, yada. It's a double bar, a tape loop, you see. And that creates the worry, worry mind, the, the anxious mind, trying to figure out in thought in the past on how to get rid of a present pain. Well, you can't get rid of a present pain by going into the past. You get rid of it in the present moment. And the only thing in the present moment is the pain. So that's where you work. That's the ground. That's the starting point. You, you start with the feeling, and you don't let the feeling bloom into a storyboard. You don't let the feeling bloom into a cause. He caused it. Why did that happen? Yada, yada, yada. See, you don't go there. You just... If you do, and you probably will, you notice that you're doing it and you come back to the pain. So it's a meditation on the pain. It's a meditation on the fire. So it's through the fire that you are relieved from the fire because the pain cannot stay if you don't resist it. If you welcome the pain, you're welcoming yourself because you are the pain. You're the feeling. The feeling's not in the guy that hurt you, you see? If you get angry at him, you're not, anger's not hurting him, it's burning you. The burning is in you, not in him. So you got to quench the fire in you. And you can't quench the fire by avoiding it. We avoid it by blaming it on somebody else. There's nobody to blame. It's you. The pain is you. So you sit with that. So this is loving yourself. This is forgiving yourself. This is letting go of the imagined cause, because the cause of the pain is not somebody else, the cause of the pain is you. So that you'll discover, you have to discover this. You can't just, oh, that's really interesting. No, you have to really do it. Check it out, see if it works. Let me know. <laughs> okay, so it's very logical if you look at it that way. Uh, the pain is present moment. The cause is in the past, so you can't remove the cause. But it's in the present moment, so you are the cause. You're the only one here. You see? So, and the cause of the pain is because you don't like it. You want to get rid of it. You want to cough the hairball up. But you can't cough it up because it's you. You can't cough yourself up. So the pain is you. So if you had so it does, so, and we have to get, this doesn't mean blaming yourself. Oh, I'm caused a body. No, 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 no blame at all. There's no blame to it. It just, it just is. You look at a flower, it's just a flower. You look at some dog poop on the floor, it's just dog poop. You know, it's just this. So when the pain is just this, you remove your story to it, the cause is removed. And if the cause is removed, Guess what also leaves? The effect. The pain is the effect of the cause, but the cause is misplaced. The cause is you. So if I'm the cause, and I see that, I'm not going to keep causing the pain. If my hand's on a hot plate, and I suddenly say, bam, well, my hand's burning, what's the cause? Oh, it's on the hot plate. Just the seeing that my hand's on the hot plate takes it off. I don't have to say, oh, I think I should take the hand off, my, off the hot plate. <laughs> There's no thinking. Seeing is action. So when we see that the pain that's burning me has no cause, it dissolves. You take away the cause, you take away the effect. 
This is the whole principle of, of the Buddha's teaching, the Buddha's awakening. Four noble truths. First one, there is suffering. All right, so you got the, you call up, you cough up this painful event, then you sit, there is the pain, there is the suffering. Now there's a cause to the suffering, but the second noble truth is, there's a cause, and the cause is your separation from it. The cause is your avoidance of it. You're running from it and blaming it on somebody else. Trying to get separating yourself from it. When you see that, that you are the pain, the feeling is you, it's not in the other person. When you see that the feeling is you, just the raw feeling, then there's no external cause to it. You see, so you're not, you're not separated from it. You're, you're move, you have unity with it. So when you have unity with it, the wound of splitting you from your own body is over. <clears throat> You've healed the wound by becoming the wound. Isn't that interesting? You've healed the wound by accepting and becoming the wound. Now you can deal <clears throat> now you can deal creatively. You'll find yourself dealing creatively with the person who hurt you. Instead of a reactive relationship, you're free to be creative. Hug him, don't hug him. It doesn't make any difference. But you're free from the hurt and the pain caused by the other. So he can... Then, usually what happens is that the other person now has the space to ask for forgiveness and say he's sorry. Because you're no longer reacting to him. You see. You stop playing the game. And that creates a whole new space for something entirely different to happen that cannot happen as long as we blame somebody else or myself for the wound that won't heal. So, really try this out and see if it works. Okay? Really try it. Thank you.